Hey folks, welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed. Today, we're diving into one of the most controversial and fascinating ships in modern naval history, the Type 45 class destroyer, also known as the Daring class. This is a ship that was supposed to dominate the seas with cutting-edge radar, unmatched stealth capabilities, and an air defense system so advanced it could shoot down missiles from space, theoretically. But what really happened? Why does a destroyer built for $1 billion apiece still struggle to hit targets in combat tests? Buckle up, we're going deep on this one. When your Navy spends more per ship than a Boeing 787, but can't reliably shoot down a drone flying at 20 knots, you know something went wrong, and that's the story of the British Type 45. To understand the Type 45, we need to rewind to the late 1980s and early 90s. The Royal Navy had just come out of the Falklands War, where they learned a brutal lesson. Their aging Type 42 destroyers were not enough to defend against modern missile threats. So, the plan was clear build a new class of destroyers designed around air defense, capable of protecting carrier groups and task forces from everything from cruise missiles to ballistic threats. The project was called the Future Surface Combatant, and it eventually evolved into the Type 45 Daring class. Launched under the umbrella of the PAMS, Principal Anti-Air Missile System, this was a joint European effort involving France, Italy, and the UK but only Britain ended up buying the full package. Now here's where things get spicy. The original goal was to have six ships delivered by 2009, but thanks to budget overruns, design flaws, and contractor delays, the first ship, HMS Daring, wasn't commissioned until 2009, and the final one didn't join the fleet until 2013. And get this, each ship cost around 1 billion pounds, that's roughly 1.3 billion USD, making them among the most expensive destroyers ever built. For context, the US Arleigh Burke class destroyers cost about half that, and yet, as we'll see, the Type 45 has struggled with basic functionality. Let's start with what makes the Type 45 special. First off, it's got a sleek, angular hull designed for low radar cross-section, meaning it's harder to detect, especially from enemy aircraft or missiles. It's not quite invisible like a stealth fighter, but it's definitely less visible than older ships. Its main air defense system is the PAMs, guided by the Samson radar, one of the most advanced phased array radars in the world. This system uses the Aster-15 and Aster-30 missiles, both developed by MBDA. The Aster-15 has a maximum range of around 30 kilometers and is optimized for point defense, while the Aster-30 can engage targets up to 120 kilometers away, including supersonic cruise missiles. It's even designed with anti-ballistic capabilities, though these haven't been tested in real combat scenarios yet. One of the most infamous issues with the Type 45 is its propulsion system, the Integrated Power System, IPS, which uses Rolls-Royce WR21 gas turbines and electric motors. It tends to run hot, like your laptop during a Zoom call in the summer. Yes, the engines themselves were fine, but the radiators and heat exchangers weren't up to the job in hot climates. So instead of sailing proudly through the Arabian Sea, these multi-million pound destroyers were basically melting down. In response, the UK Ministry of Defence spent 20 million pounds retrofitting improved cooling systems, but even after that, reports show the ships still face reliability issues in warm waters. In 2016, HMS Dauntless faced engine trouble in the Red Sea and required assistance. And in 2013, HMS Diamond suffered a breakdown during exercises in the Mediterranean. These weren't isolated incidents, they highlighted systemic issues in the propulsion design. Think of it like buying a supercomputer to check email. The Type 45 is packed with high-end tech, but often doesn't get the chance to flex its muscles because it can't stay powered up in extreme conditions. Now, let's talk about the big question. How effective is the Type 45 in real-world scenarios? 
Well, in 2021, HMS Duncan shot down a target drone using the Aster-30 missile. A success, sure, but keep in mind that was a scripted test. Real combat isn't that clean. In contrast, the US Aegis system has been tested repeatedly in live fire exercises and even scored kills in actual combat during the Iraq War. The Type 45 hasn't had that opportunity, and honestly, we might not want it to. Why? Because in 2017, reports indicated that the Type 45s had very limited live firing experience, with only a few successful tests conducted since commissioning. In 2023, HMS Defender failed to lock onto a drone during a NATO exercise. The reason? Software bugs. Again. Now, don't get me wrong, when everything works, the Type 45 is a beast. Its radar can spot targets hundreds of kilometers away, and its missiles can reach hypersonic speeds. But the problem is consistency. It's like having a supercar that sometimes refuses to start. So, let's break this down. You spend over six billion pounds building six destroyers. Each one costs more than a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. You promise cutting-edge technology, global reach, and unmatched air defense capability. And then you end up with ships that can't fire their own missiles reliably, break down in warm water, and require constant maintenance. On paper, the Type 45 should be one of the most powerful destroyers in Europe, in reality, the French Frem frigates, cheaper, more reliable, and just as capable in many roles, are often seen as better value for money. And here's the kicker. While the UK was pouring billions into the Type 45, they were cutting submarine numbers, delaying aircraft carrier deployments, and struggling to maintain older ships. Was this the best use of limited defense funds? Critics say no. In fact, some analysts argue that the Type 45 program became a black hole for the Royal Navy's budget, sucking up resources that could have gone toward more versatile platforms like frigates or unmanned systems. Even the crews have spoken out. In 2019, anonymous Royal Navy personnel told The Guardian that life aboard a Type 45 was tough due to cramped quarters, frequent breakdowns, and lack of spare parts. So yeah, it's a beautiful ship, but beauty doesn't win wars, reliability does. Despite the drama, the Royal Navy isn't giving up on the Type 45 anytime soon. They're already planning upgrades, including a new radar system and potential integration of the CAM, Common Anti-Air Modular Missile, for secondary defense. There are ongoing studies about integrating new electronic warfare systems and possibly directed energy weapons in future upgrades. If those happen, the Type 45 could finally live up to its original promise. But here's the catch. Upgrades are expensive. And with the UK facing growing defense pressures from Russia to China, the mod has to ask itself, is it worth sinking more money into a troubled platform, or should they focus on newer, more flexible designs? Some analysts believe that the Type 45 could eventually be complemented or succeeded by the next-generation Type 83 destroyers, although the program remains in early development stages. Until then, the Daring class remains a symbol of both ambition and mismanagement. At the end of the day, the Type 45 Daring class is a paradox. It's a technological marvel with some of the best sensors and weapons in the world, but plagued by reliability issues that make it more of a liability than a leader. It represents the highs and lows of military procurement, the dream of building something revolutionary, and the nightmare of turning that dream into reality. So, was it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. But one thing's for sure, the story of the Type 45 will be studied for decades in defense circles as a case study in what happens when innovation outpaces execution. If you enjoyed this dive into one of the most controversial ships in modern naval history, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Do you think the Type 45 can be fixed, or is it time to move on? What would you change in its design? And hey, if you want more deep dives into military tech, strategy, and the occasional disaster, hit that bell icon. We've got more coming. 
Thanks for watching and supporting Military Forces Unleashed. Your engagement keeps this channel afloat, pun intended. Whether you're a seasoned naval geek or just dipping your toes into military history, we appreciate every minute you spend with us. Don't forget to check out our other videos. See you next time, stay sharp, and keep exploring the high seas of military history.